So let's talk about prime and composite numbers and how we can use, uh, I guess, prime numbers to break a composite number down using something that's known as a factor tree. So first of all, we need to define what a prime and a composite number are, and let's go through some examples of each. So a prime number is a natural number, so that's going to be an important word to think about, which has exactly two different factors, one and itself. So what a natural number is, a natural number is the counting numbers. It's, you know, your one, two, three, four, it's all your whole numbers that's greater than zero. It doesn't include zero. It doesn't include negative numbers. It's any number that's a counting number greater than zero. And a prime number has exactly two different factors. So what's a factor? Well, a factor is something that divides into it perfectly. So let's take the number, for example, seven. All right, seven we say is a prime number because seven can be divided by exactly two numbers. It can be divided by itself, so seven, and it can be divided by one. All right, so these are its two factors. All right, and because they they fit the properties, it gets divided exactly by one in itself. All right, we can call it a prime number. However, a composite number is a natural number which has exactly, I say has more than two factors, not exactly, has more than two factors. So let's take the number eight as an example of a composite number. All right, if we look at the number eight, we can think of this as it divides by one, it divides by uh, two, it divides by four, and it divides by eight. Okay, so in this case here, we've got four different numbers that these that the number eight divides by, and because of that, we consider that to be a composite number. Now, we have to think about all natural numbers here. So we could keep having a look at different numbers, um, which are prime numbers, composite numbers. So if I started listing the primes, for example, uh, two is a number that can only be divided by itself, and one. Uh, three fits in that category. Four doesn't because four can also be divided by two. Uh, five certainly does. Six doesn't, but seven does. Uh, eight doesn't, nine doesn't, 10 doesn't, but 11 does. And we could keep going with the prime numbers. Now, each of those numbers I've listed can only be divided by itself and um, one. So what this sort of raises the question, right, is what about the following number, okay? What about one? Is one a prime number or is it a composite number? Well, if you think about a prime number, it has to have exactly two different factors, one and itself. Now, it definitely has the factor of one because one can be divided by, its, uh, by one. And it can be divided by itself because one can be divided by itself. However, it's the same factor. Like that factor is one in both instances. So it's not actually a prime factor because it doesn't have exactly two different factors. But nor is it a composite number because it doesn't have more than two factors either. So one is kind of a unique number that it's nor like it's not prime, nor is it composite. So why do we why are we interested in knowing prime and composite numbers? Well, we're going to focus a little bit, at least in this PowerPoint, on breaking composite numbers down in terms of its primes. So let's let's use a, what's something that's known as a factor tree to look at the number one hundred and eighty and how we can represent this as a product of prime factors. Well, essentially, what we want to do is we want to look at the smallest prime number. All right, in this case, the smallest prime number is two. And we want to see, does 180 divide by 2? And if it does, great. If it doesn't, we would move to the next smallest prime number. In this case, 180 does divide by 2. All right. And when we divide it by 2, it gives us a, um, oh, sorry, it leaves us with 90 left over. All right. Now, 2 can't be divided by any other prime numbers other than itself, so we can kind of ignore our 2 little branch here and just focus on our 90. Now, 90 is still a composite number, all right, because once again, it can be divided by 2. So let's divide 90 by 2. When we do that, we're left with 45. Okay. Now, 45 is composite because it can be divided by 1 itself, uh, 5, for example. However, it can no longer be divided by 2. 
So what we want to now do is we want to divide 45 into its next smallest prime number. So the next prime number is 3. We can quickly check. There's 45 divided by 3, and it does in this case. All right. If it didn't, we would go to the next prime number. But because it divides by 3, we get 15 left over. Now we check. Is 15 a prime number? Well, no, it's not because we can continue dividing it. Once again, we can actually divide 15 by 3. And when we do that, we're left with 5. And we just check, is 5 a prime number? And in this case, 5 is a prime number. All right, so we're kind of finished breaking down our number into its parts, into its factors. So we can tell that 180 can be divided by 2, can be divided by 2, can be divided by 3, can be divided by 5, essentially. All right, however, if we look at the end of each of these branches, Okay, so we look at this end here, this is an end of a branch, this end of a branch, this end of a branch, this end of a branch. If we multiply all of these numbers together, so this 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5, what we will result in is the original number that we started with, which is 180. So what we've now essentially done is we've represented the number 180 into a product of its prime factors. Now, the question's asked to put it into index form. Well, we looked at index form in our last video. So we can see we've got two times two, which is two times by itself twice, okay? And we've got three times three, which is three times by itself twice. And then, of course, we're multiplying it by five. So now what we've essentially done is we've broken this number 180, this compound number, all right, into a product of all of its primes um, multiplied together. Now, what I did here was getting it um, into its, uh, you know, factor tree using only prime numbers. However, you can take the same 180 and use a bit of a different strategy. So for example, if you didn't pick up that 180 could be divided by two, that's no problem, all right? But you did pick up that say 180 can be divided by 60, for example, all right? Um, in fact, let's think about this. Let's actually go 30. Let's do 30 for the sake of this argument. So we've got 30 and it divides by 30 uh, six times. What we'll notice from here is both 30 and 6 are not prime numbers, okay? So we've divided 180 into two compound numbers. So what we do with this then, if we're wanting to find the product of prime numbers, is we continue with both of these. So we look at 30 and go, what is the, like, what's a number that 30 divides by? Whether it's prime or not prime, this will actually work. So, for example, I can look at 30 and go, well, it divides by 5, and it divides by 5 six times. Okay, great. All right. What about 6? Well, 6 can divide by 2, and it divides by 2 three times. All right. And we've got this 6 here, obviously, as well. That divides by 2 three times. And we've got to look at the ends of our branches now. We've got to check, is the end of each of these branches a prime number? And in this case, they are. All right, so we've now just found all the prime numbers that 180 divides by. All right, which is what we had before. We've got 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5, which is 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5. So I guess what I'm illustrating here is even if you don't, find the smallest prime number that the number divides by. As long as you're finding numbers that um, a compound number does divide by and you check the end of each branch and then continue moving each branch into smaller values that it divides by until you do find prime numbers, you'll still find all the products of the prime factors that that original number divides by. So. That's sort of how we can use factor trees to break down numbers into products of primes.